Okay, so we saw in the previous video how companies are accumulating costs for each and every job. And then they get to a point where they have costs that aren't directly traceable to a specific product, like depreciation, supervisor salary, maintenance salaries, taxes, insurance, etc. However, if we omit that information when we go to calculate the cost of a particular job, we would be omitting part of the cost. So companies have come up with a way to allocate that overhead. Um, and this is called a predetermined overhead rate. So um, the company is going to assign costs to specific jobs based on actual costs incurred. And um, we will estimate that using this predetermined overhead rate. So what they do is they come up with this uh, allocation base. So um, manufacturing overhead is going to be applied to all jobs that are in process. And we apply that overhead using a base that we believe causes the overhead cost to be incurred. So some companies allocate manufacturing overhead using direct labor hours or machine hours. Those are the most common typically used allocation bases. So we have to allocate overhead costs to jobs for a variety of reasons. As I mentioned before, it's difficult if not impossible sometimes to trace actual overhead costs to a specific job. So the cost of grease for machinery to manufacture a product is part of our cost, our manufacturing cost, but it would be impossible to accurately trace the amount of grease consumed to manufacture one output of product. So manufacturing overhead also includes a number of different costs and it would be very difficult to gather all of them together in one time to charge for a particular product. So a job may actually be complete and sold before we can determine the actual overhead costs incurred. For example, you don't get your utility bill except for once a month. So if you manufactured a product at the beginning of the month, you might not actually know what the utility costs were associated with that product until the following month, but you've already completed and sold that product. So we have to estimate what those costs are going to be. And the way that we do that, as I mentioned before, was to apply a predetermined overhead rate. So um, we will, uh, you can see here, abbreviate that PMOHR, which stands for predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. And then we multiply that times some level of activity. So we use that base, whether it's direct labor costs or machine hours, and we will multiply that times this predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. Now the predetermined manufacturing overhead rate is calculated by taking the estimated total manufacturing cost for the period and dividing it by the estimated total units in the allocation base for the coming period. So here's an example. The company had, I'm sorry, $640,000 worth of total manufacturing overhead estimated for the coming period and they had 160,000 of direct labor hours. So if you take the 640,000 estimated total manufacturing cost divided by the 160,000 estimated direct labor hours, you get $4 per direct labor hour. So um, if the company, uh, the job required 10 labor hours, we would take 10 times the four and that will give us the actual amount. Here's another example. So the total estimated manufacturing overhead costs are a million dollars. The allocation base is direct labor hours and you always have to pay attention to what base they're using. The total estimated direct labor hours is $62,500 and the job uses 500 direct labor hours. So a million dollar estimated overhead costs divided by the total estimated direct labor hours, 625. That gives us a predetermined manufactured overhead rate of $16 per direct labor hour. If that particular job uses 500 direct labor hours, that's $16 times 500 or $8,000. So in our job cost sheet, we would show $8,000 uh, applied to that particular job for manufacturing overhead. And in this particular case, you can see they manufactured 50 units. The total cost to manufacture those 50 units was 58,000. So we're gonna get a cost per unit of $1,160. Real quickly, let's just look at the cost flow then. So direct costs are gonna be determined by the 
job cost records. So we've got direct materials flowing in, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. Those all constitute our work in process. As those goods are finished, they move to finished goods inventory. And then as finished goods are sold, they move on over to cost of goods sold, which is an expense. So gross profit would be determined by subtracting the cost of goods sold from the sales revenue. Let's just uh, review a few reasons why management needs to know the cost of a company's products. So um, to reduce future job costs. So if we can examine the exact costs that are traced back to a job, that might help us determine ways of reducing costs of similar jobs that we produce in the future. Also, um, access and compare profitability of models. So often managers want to compare the gross profit on each model to the gross profit radio of all ratio of all models to determine which products to emphasize selling. We call this product mix. So we want to sell products that have um, higher gross profit or highest contribution margin. Then we um, may need to look at dealing with price pressures from our competitors. So management can also use this information to determine how it will deal with pricing pressures. Let's say a competitor drops the price of its product. A profit analysis then could show that we could drop our price by a similar profit and still make a reasonable amount. Um, discounts on high volume sales, so often customers will ask us for a discount if they're going to make a large purchase. And again, knowing the cost of our products will help us know whether or not that price would still be profitable for the company. Um, markup percentage or final bid price is an um, agreed upon sometimes before we uh, go ahead with production, so we want to know that information. and. Um, Financial statement preparation also is an area here where we need to know when we're preparing our financial statements so we can have the most accurate information available. Remember that the cost flows into cost of goods sold, which impacts our income statement, as well as the amount in working process and finished goods inventory that we will see on our balance sheet. And lastly here, um, sustainability. So job costing records serve a vital role for manufacturers who embrace sustainability. Because job cost records contain information about the direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead assigned to each job, they capture the essential resources required to manufacture a product. So the um, summary information on job cost records can be enhanced to provide management with further information about how the product or the production process may affect the environment. Employees involved in the manufacturing process, future consumers of the product, and future disposal of the packaging materials and product itself. So some types of categories that we might consider just in the job materials section, the material inputs that are post-consumer use or recycled, toxic versus non-toxic materials, packaging materials that could be recycled or composted, materials sourced from local suppliers versus those sourced from geographically distant suppliers, which would increase the carbon footprint, materials that would become waste as a result of the production process, materials sourced from companies that embrace fair level practices and environmental sustainability, etc. So um, the job cost record could also reflect the percentage of end product that can be recycled by the customer. Companies embracing sustainability will also need more information about the specific resources that are treated as manufacturing overhead costs, especially those related to energy and water consumption. To provide better information, the accounting system could contain multiple subsidiary overhead accounts based on the types of overhead incurred.